Uh, good evening. Uh, this is the Gold Park Traffic and Safety Commission, and it is uh, just a little after eight, and we'll have a uh, call. Uh, ro uh, roll call. Cuthbertson. Yes. D. Tomaso. Here. Flaskamp. Here. Vic Murray. Carl Timmerman. Here. Karen Timmerman. Here. Wagner. Here. Chairperson Pinkos. Here. Okay, moving on to item number three, amendments to the agenda. Do we have any amendments? Okay, doesn't look like we do, so we'll move on. Uh, item number four, public comments on agenda items. We have a few people here. Joe, you can come up, uh, keep it to about three minutes, sure. state your name. along the railroad and uh, so the bottom paragraph is the only thing that really needs to be brought to your attention. I didn't expect today and none of those uh, 
roadway fences so that people access to walk right up to the railroad mm -hmm. to be repaired. I don't know if it's our property or privately owned property, but it, Thank you, Bob. at our point, uh, the retired conductor, I'm <coughs> well aware of the fact that people have yeah, headphones on, so they're, you know, they're not paying attention, they can walk out right between the trees. And train could be approached and they wouldn't even hear it. Especially if it's a commuter train inbound with a locomotive that's at the back of the train, they wouldn't even hear it coming. Uh, Willow Park is recognized throughout the railroad industry because of the fencing that they have put up along the main line where you have the, uh, on the Union Pacific where they have the flat, wrought iron style fencing. But there are gaps and people will tend to go through the gaps. So you might have know, uh, like I said, I brought this to your attention a couple years ago. Uh, they're still not addressed, and I'm hoping that uh, they can take another look and uh, bring that up to the top. Is there any questions for me? Do you have anything you want to um, follow up on? Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, regarding the Zoom, I know when you spoke at the coffee at the board on Saturday, um, I know Jack Kozar brought up a question. I didn't know if you went farther because, like, they said that sometimes if you are a, a trustee or on a com uh, committee or commission, that you can't vote. Is that one of the ordinances that would be changed? I'm not aware of that. Oh, okay. That's oh, I was just wondering. They would have to directly touch to the village court, but I believe when I was there that they did allow the commissioners to vote. remotely to vote on proposal. I was just wondering if that would still con consider a quorum. If yeah, they were still there in line. I'm sure they have to still comply with open meetings there. I'm sure okay. that, like I said, it's in more involved in just me bringing mm -hmm. this to sure. your attention. Got it. Thank you. That's a court that the Andrea Rosedale person could answer. Go ahead, Bob. I think when you have a uh, virtual meeting, you have to, and this may be, maybe Kevin can correct me, I think that you have to have an actual physical quorum present. I'll be honest, I don't know what the current rules are. I know that uh, remote attendance was acceptable for a period during COVID. At some point since COVID, uh, there were questions that came up with this commission about remote attendance, and unfortunately, I was advised that that was no longer an option. Uh, as to why it wasn't an option, I'm not entirely sure. I can dig back into that and find out and get the commission some more information. Okay, well, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Informed and I'll be back here next month so I to know how the signs look. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else on agenda? Okay. Moving on to item number five, public comments and non-agenda items. Okay. Check these out, man. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Uh, all right, then move on to item six, uh, report on the bike pedestrian and transit subcommittee. Uh, do you have anything? Yes, I do. I'll just make it brief. Thank you, Chairman Pincos. Um, so the uh, bike pedestrian and transit subcommittee uh, met on February 22nd. Uh, we had some visitors. Uh, Trisha Little was there. Uh, we also had a couple students, I believe they're Willowbrook students, uh, who were to, they were there to kind of observe a commission in action. So it was interesting that we had, we, we normally don't have a lot of public uh, attending our meetings, but we did uh, on the 22nd. One of the things that we talked about, we're planning some events for bike month, which is May. Um, May 8th um, is Bike Walk to School Day, and we'll be working with the North School PTA to see how we can help them with that event. Um, we're, as I mentioned, we're, made, we're planning some events for Bike Month. One of them is we're going to, we got approval from the Environmental Concerns Commission to fund the showing of a, a, a movie called The Engine Inside. It has to do with, uh, it's, a, it's a, the trailer is pretty inspiring and we're working with the library to show that movie. 
Um, we will be again having Rite of Silence, which is on May 15th. Um, we will have a smart cycling class, which is going to be on, um, we're working with Parks and Rec to do that. Uh, that will be actually, in the past it's been at Lufkin Park, but because Lufkin Park is under, under construction, uh, it'll be in the parking lot by Jefferson Pool, and that'll be on May 11th. Um, and there is a flyer about that that's going up in the kiosks along the uh, prairie path to kind of promote it. Um, we did talk about uh, Ardmore Avenue, uh, the potential for development. Kevin had mentioned it, that there's a, um, funding for at least two segments and uh, we're looking forward to that and the opportunities because if, if there may be opportunities to improve access for pedestrians and, and bicyclists. Uh, we talked about the PACE programs in, in, uh, in Villa Park. Uh, we talked about Ride DuPage um, and I did receive a, an email from them about with more, with more um, details about Ride DuPage. Talked about the Golden Shovel program, which uh, Joe Amore just talked about. Uh, there was an update uh, from Joe Amore from the DuPage Rail Safety Council. And uh, the VFW is looking to have a bike event in April. Uh, I reached out to the commander at the, the VFW. They're still in the planning phases for that. Um, and that essentially concludes my report. Thank you. Can I drop back to the, the video that you, I didn't catch any, I didn't catch that, the video, there's some being showed at the library. There's a movie, a movie, mm -hmm. it's an original movie. It's called The Engine Within. And it's, uh, Ant Hill Productions is the distributor for the movie. Okay. And so we'll be showing it at the library, and I, th and I, I don't have the date in here in front of me. I think we landed on May 9th at 6:30 p.m. And there's uh, there'll be more promotion regarding that that showing. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Um, I've actually got two things for the bike subcommittee. Um, I was listening to the meeting, uh, I think it was January 25th, and you had Marcucci there? We had Tom Marcucci, who's the PACE representative right. for DuPage County president, I, yeah. I was going to suggest maybe, I know, I know you guys were talking about trying to alter the bus routes that go through Villa Park, maybe it would be a good idea to get with the Economic Development Commission because bus routes through Villa Park should be able to help with employment and economic development areas and maybe get some more people working on trying to get something accomplished in that arena. Right. So changing bus routes for PACE is very difficult. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. Our former economic development director, Jan Fiola, made an attempt at doing that, uh, but was unsuccessful. Um, so, and I think um, director Marcucci alluded to that, that it's difficult to change um, maybe when the development by the train stations in place, that would be appropriate. But you, when you change a, a bus route, it changes the, you know, people depend on the dependability of the bus route, you know, the timing, the route. Uh, so, um, I don't know that's something that we, that we would pursue, but I think it's a great idea to coordinate with economic development, with the Economic Development Commission. Uh, we have talked to them about uh, some other issues, but yeah, I, I don't think that's really something that's viable right now. Okay. Is that good, Joe? Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Then let's move on to approval of the minutes uh, of basically February 6th. 
2024. Did everybody have a chance to look at it? Okay. Do I have a motion then? We'll I'll it. make the motion. Go. Do you have a motion? I'll second. Carol? All in favor say yay. 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 Any nays? <laughs> okay. Moving on. So that's approved. Uh, we'll move on to old business. I mean, at the moment, we don't have any. Yeah, I've got something. Old, old business or yeah. new business? Old business. Okay. We did speak uh, on several occasions about Vermont and Addison Road and the traffic situation there. Okay. Uh, Sergeant Landa has joined us tonight from the police department. He's, I'm told, has some information about what they've been doing to try to help deal with the situation. I got some uh, stats for you guys, just uh, the amount of Madison, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. All right, so what we do is we put an extra watch to our patrol uh, specific to that intersection starting on 213. Since then, we've had nine stops, mostly uh, stop sign violations, five warnings issued, and uh, three tickets. So the last three weeks or so, that's what you have. Nine stops, five warrants, three tickets for that intersection. Okay. And typically, was that just any time during the day that you were out there? So it's split up between our day shift and night shift. So you have in the morning, afternoon, and evening. So it's spread out. So we have uh, some part timers, full timers, all engaging in the Okay. So it was just sporadic. Correct. Yeah. Um, the entry is no specific time of the complaint, uh, but it's given to the entire day. And okay. night, so. All right. Thank you. That's all. Thanks, Sarge. Oh, is it possible to have a copy of that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I will on this one. I get your better one. Okay. Yeah. Sounds great. You just pass that on to Kevin then. Will do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, any other comments? Nope. Then let's move on to new business. Business? Business. My little. Yeah. Long day already. Any new? I've got <laughs> Okay, Joe, what do you got? <laughs> I've been had a busy weekend. Um, a couple things, actually. Um, a resident asked me about... Uh, you guys have seen the signs that people put in our yard, slow down, our kids live here, or something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. The ones that we handed out a couple yes, of years ago? Yes, 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 okay. yes. I've had a resident ask me if we're going to do anything like that again. Um, most of the signs, I think, that went out then had over time just deteriorated. Mm -hmm. I've seen um, that. And I was I thinking... Got them out and they're kind of shabby looking. Yeah, I was thinking, too, it might not be a bad <laughs> idea to have several different designs so that people don't get so blind to them to uh, uh, you know draw well, I understand what you're saying about yeah. that I mean just like uh, warning lights on the police cars and stuff they got different types of patterns and sure stuff. sure sure so, so it was I thought this is one of the things I've been working on all weekend so I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to look at something like that and uh, redoing that uh, maybe distributing at the library at the rec center um, maybe even uh, village events over the summer. We we could we could look into it if we want to. Uh, the only thing is, is, I don't remember. Did we get get uh, give out all the signs, or did they? I know at one time they had a I handful left. Weren't they at the police department? They were at the police department. Landa, have you seen those signs over there? The uh, drive like your children live here. I yeah. Those. No. Okay. Okay. Yes, Bob. Uh, those were all distributed. I'm pretty certain. I talked. There was a. Con we had a conversation with Deputy Chief Mc McCann, and I'm pretty certain those were all gone. Because okay. uh, I know they were trying to hand them out at different events. Since yep. The at, uh, National Night Out, we distributed mm -hmm. some. Um, I think summer summer, fest fest summer festival. Festival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And those came out of those came out of our budget. That's correct. Yeah. And I believe it was about seven hundred and fifty bucks for them. 
something like this, yeah. Next category. Well, with political season slowly ending, we may be able to get some better deals on signage just because they're going to be slow for a few months. <laughs> so I am, I don't know if we would put this as new business or this will I think, I think we could make a new business, business. Um, because mm -hmm. we've done it before, but that was last year, you know, no, a couple of years ago, a couple, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Renew, so re we, renewed business. Renewed renewed business. business. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, Kevin, would we have a number then? And just yeah, we do have a number for the next uh, item in sequence. And we've got plenty of time, so we can actually put it as an agenda item if you want next meeting. But mm -hmm. well, we might as well wrong. Just brought it up. We can just put it on as an agenda item for new yeah. business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we give it a number at the moment. Yeah, if you're looking for that number, that would be 898. And uh, residential informational signs. I'm trying to think what we named it last time. I believe last time the, uh, the agenda item was simply drive like your kids live here signs. Okay. Uh, So we'll put it as an agenda item then, Joe. Okay. And uh, we'll, uh, why don't we just discuss a little bit further at our next meeting. Sure. And then you're thinking of possibly some different designs or sayings. Either or both, different color schemes, just so that you don't get that eye blindness as you're driving past it every day. Okay. Uh, any comments at all? I agree with a few different colors and yeah, so you're not just tuning it out. Mm -hmm. All right, so why don't we just all kind of think of possibly uh, some different patterns, mm -hmm. colors, sayings from a little bit different sayings than two. Uh, kind of on the same note, one time with District 45, we had them come up with slogans, the kids, and there was a contest. Remember that? Yeah. And we could maybe get some kids to come up with some slogans or something like that to put sure. on the signs. Gets Talk people involved. Ardmore, Ardmore was, I think it was Ardmore. It might yeah, have been all. I, was it Ardmore? And I think it was just Ardmore. Well, it was maybe just Ardmore when they were having the problems with the traffic in the uh, mm -hmm. mornings and the. When? All been cleared up right now. Oh yeah. I'm sure it has. Yes. Actually, I, I kind of passed it a little bit early, but. Uh, doesn't seem like they have as many problems as they used to. Well, we haven't heard anything from them for a while. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be uh, next month. Yeah. Well, why don't we I think I, about this over the next uh, several weeks, and then when we come back in uh, April, we can discuss it a little bit further with ideas, and maybe somebody will come up with a idea of the sign Design. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's one. You said you had a couple. I had. I, I, I'm not sure if this should go into new business or not. Um, I had a, another resident come to me and ask me about better safety uh, devices at uh, road crossings at the Prairie Path. Now, Kevin tells me there is something in, in plan for that. But I don't know if this should be under new business or where. I guess that would be up to the, the commission. Um, yeah, I guess just to elaborate a little bit, I, I believe the concern was that we need more signage or more um, reflective markers or something that would call more attention to those trail crossings. Uh, I can report that the village plans to install one set of uh, what we call RRFBs. Those are rectangular uh, rapid flashing beacons. Those are the installs that you see at Prairie Path in Ardmore and Prairie Path in Villa. And the goal for the village is to install one additional set of those each budget year uh, until we hit uh, at least all the, the busier crossings, if not all of them. 
Uh, I don't know if that's something that the, the resident who raised those concerns had in mind or I was thinking of something like road markers or road reflectors like you would see on a highway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's where his thought process was, but and staff could look into uh, options on that in terms of what is permitted and what those costs, those associated costs would be. Just a qu question. Go ahead. Uh, so does this have a, would this have be a, like an overhead stop sign that would be activated? Um, this would be, I would say almost identical, if not identical to the ones that currently exist at Ardmore mm -hmm. in the Prairie okay. Path and Villa in the Prairie Path, where there's uh, a push button activation to it okay. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah and then uh the perimeter of the uh the diamond sign has leds that flash mm -hmm. uh and then the actual again the red i'm sorry the rectangular rapid flashing beacon is just the little square light below the sign that flashes until the timer runs out question was there a certain intersection that they were talking about or are they just no, saying they, all of them in general they, they were talking in general he both runs and bikes up and down the prairie path um, I, I don't know. I'm not. Sh I'm not sure how how practical what you're talking about, Kevin's going to be because um, I get the impression these are just drivers that don't see him, and I don't know that. In, in my mind, you're going to want to cross if you think you're safe. If you think the driver sees you or something like that, you're going to want to cross, not stop and push a button. Right. Those obviously do require whoever's crossing the street to activate right. them. Right. So, mm -hmm. so I, and and considering the cost, I think you said they were about fifteen thousand a piece. The the versions that we currently have are about fifteen thousand dollars per installation. Yeah. I I I don't know about everybody else, but I'd like to see us look at some lower cost options. I'm not quite sure what the best would be, but. Um, maybe look and see what options there were. Yeah, like I said, staff can certainly look into what's permitted. Uh, we're, we're governed yeah. pretty heavily by state federal rules. regulations and, yeah, and state regulations, mm -hmm. all kinds of different guidelines. And then on top of that, obviously, the cost consideration. But we can do some digging into that and see what yeah. uh, potential options might be available. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Go ahead. Now, I also think we should probably look into is having more signage or something because if you ever sat and just watched people when they're on their bicycles or running or walking a lot of them don't press the buttons they just automatically jump out in front of traffic if yeah. we start marking yeah. the street with all this stuff on it it's going to give those pedestrians and bicyclers a false sense of security and they're jumping out in front of moving vehicles um, right. we we need something to um, get them to acknowledge that, that they have a they responsibility need, as well. right they, right they have a responsibility too mm -hmm. in order to inform the the motorists motorists that you're there they need to push the button we need more signage and more markings of some kind on the prairie path itself yeah this my, is this is a two-way street for both motorists and, the button. and pedestrians right but like i say if you just spend there and spend some time and watch how many people actually push a button or versus how many just automatically dart out in front of traffic just so automatically assuming and like i say if you put a lot more marking on the street it's going to give those people a larger false sense of security. Well, maybe we need to do both. Yeah. Find a way to better alert the drivers and alert the people on the path preparing to cross. I believe at every crossing, and Bob, you can confirm this, uh, and Kevin, I believe there is a stop sign there. A stop sign. There is one, mm -hmm. yes. For Ten every crossing. So all the people using the path are, you know they're sitting there saying you should stop and obviously look both ways and then proceed to go across the street so uh, you know it isn't like uh, what you were thinking of is just people darting right across and they do basically because they think they have the right of way as they're riding down the path that's a common mistake yes they don't realize they have to stop literally I've seen people running across the street and hold their hand out so, yeah, I guess it's kind of a two-way street in reference to it. Yeah, no, I agree. And then I think when it gets to be on the prairie path, it's governed by DuPage County. County because mm -hmm. that's their property? For the most part, yeah. There's a few exceptions, but not, not many. Okay. I would say if you're looking at one of the intersections, um, 
I would say look at Monterey this year because it's very blind. Um, you know what I mean? Especially when you're driving. I mean, we, we probably like, drive. I drive up that way a lot. And cause I live right over there. And it's like you're always like kind of inching. Are they coming? <laughs> you know, it's like um, so, you know, especially when it gets, you know, obviously the warmer weather. So that's definitely a blind spot um, on both ways. True. There, I mean, is so. it over by 83 there? Um, yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah, right there by Ovaltine. Behind Ovaltine. Behind Ovaltine. Yeah, right, right where they have is the that part of that improvement mm -hmm. of the bike path over there? By no, the bike path is going to go down, oh, what's that straight on the other side? It's on the other side. Wildwood. Wildwood. It's on Wildwood. So this is coming up um, between St. Charles and um, Park. It's like, well, between Wildwood and Park, I should say. There um, is, I guess, to your point, Jay, there is a uh, proposed trail that will be installed as part of the tri trail on Monterey uh, between Wildwood and the Parade Path. Uh, but the project does not include uh, installation of these RRFB sites. Okay. So. Okay. Bob, you got another? And if, well, uh, with regards to Monterey, I know that there's been foliage was an issue, and I think that staff has kind of worked on that at various points. Yeah, uh, we do. Well, I guess I said should say the Parks and Recreation Department goes out there and trims that back periodically. Right, I and then we put spinners up to try and draw attention yeah. to the crossing. Yeah, I believe all. I think all crossings in town yeah, now have spinners, yeah. either those or the flashing lights. I say it's probably if they're trying to do one every year. Probably that'd be probably the one I would pick for this year. I mean, sure. since you're just looking at Harvard and Summit would be next, the other two, mm -hmm. and they're pretty wide open. So your major cross streets. Uh, obviously, what do they consider the major cross streets uh, as far as for the village in reference to the because you got two of them already, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm looking at Ardmore, yeah. I guess, um, Commissioner Di Tommaso's concerns I think pertain specifically to the prairie path, but uh, I guess I should clarify that staff is not. Looking only at the prairie path, that would also be the Great Western Trail, Trail. would also be considered as well. So, um, there's the argument about uh, visibility. There's also an argument about the volume of traffic, both pedestrian, bicycle, and motorist as well. So, um, we're still looking at, at which locations would be best served uh, for those installs to happen sooner yeah. rather than later in the process. So, do we want to? make this an agenda item or just a common discussion every periodically throughout the year can we just get like updates to see what staff's thinking mm -hmm. just i mean That's, yeah i can come back mm -hmm. to the next meeting with some uh, additional information regarding less costly uh less extensive options than mm -hmm. the flashing sign installs and at that point the commission can okay. either discuss make an agenda item uh, some combination okay sure. yes Bob. Uh, question for Kevin. Uh, in the past, uh, there was an issue with us getting approval from the county. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume that's still that's still the case. Uh, I don't believe that's necessarily the case anymore. Okay. Um, I believe that um, the uh, opinion of these flashing signs has changed in the few years since we first installed the the ones at Villa and Ardmore. Uh, additionally, at, to Jay's point earlier. A number of these crossings are, in fact, village right of way. And so for those, we would not need DuPage County uh, approval. So it'll come down to, uh, yeah, you're correct, Bob, it'll come down to the, the county's, um, you know, willingness to participate and allow us to put them in. In some locations, others, it'll be up to us entirely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we'll just leave it as a discussion and see what the update brings. Great. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Other than that, no other new business? All right. Uh, moves on to item number 10, commissioner's comments. And uh, let's start from the other side. We'll start with Carl. I don't know if this is much of a comment, but there was an accident this evening in Oprah Terrace on 22nd Street, about the death. My wife and I were discussing it. We wondered if a panhandler might have been involved in that. And I was, it, it brought up 
further point to the discussion is, you know, pan, I've noticed a lot more panhandling going on, and where it may fall under our purview is that it is a safety issue. Um, I mean, I see them all the time, all over the place. Not so much in Villa Park. Um, I don't know what the police's attitude towards panhandling is, but it seems like it's it's viral. There's so much of it there. And somebody was telling me there's a guy that picks people up and drops them off at corners and takes a percentage of their intake. Mm -hmm. And so I just I just want to bring it up as a is this. Is there something that we should be thinking about there? Maybe addressing this in some way? I guess the question is, is there an ordinance on it? I believe there is. Is there an ordinance about panhandling? No. I don't thought there was. It depends on where it's going on. If it's in the middle of the roadway, it's causing a hazard, then we can take action. But if it's on private property, how is it going to be the private property owner? If it's on those property, we leave them as this unless, again, they're creating some kind of a safety hazard. So it's kind of an unwritten policy. Okay. Okay. That would be nice too. What's that? They leave a mess wherever they are. Do we have a, uh, a the lot of them? The issue we had was uh, a gentleman at uh, Morgan Madison. Uh, we were arrested a few times, and so he's been caught for a little while. Really? Um, that's, the, that's the biggest one. I think we get the usual <coughs> people at Walmart. Or at High Ridge and uh, Ardmore by the Islamic Center of the high school. They're all private property or, you know, in the area, so how much can we do about those people? Okay. Well, just something I thought I'd bring up if we want to think about it or keep an eye on it. I, I could be wrong, but uh, it's my understanding that a number of years ago, the Supreme Court actually ruled that you can't arrest somebody just for panhandling. I'm not familiar with that one, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. So I, I don't, that's why I don't think there's an ordinance. Um, if they're standing on a sidewalk or something like that, there's not much you can do as long as they're not impeding, impeding traffic in some manner. Mm -hmm. If if they're on private property, then the private property owner can have them trespass. That's an option, but usually they're on a sidewalk or a median, uh, you know. It's a very difficult situation. And then, of course, you know, if, if you do arrest them, then there's all kinds of other problems. What are you arresting them for? They're going to turn them loose that's as soon true. as they hit the jail. So <laughs> that's, that's another thing to, you know, it's a lot to be considered a lot. here. Yeah. But I mean, it seems like it's getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Karen? Uh, voting is, uh, early voting is going on now. It's on until. Uh, March 18th, March 19th is election day. Be sure to vote. Thank you. Jack? Okay. Me? Yes, Vicki. Yep. I don't have anything. Thank you. Bob? Yeah, I do have something. Um, <coughs> the, um, and I know that Kevin is well aware of this, that the manual and uniform traffic control devices uh, was recently updated and uh, the Highway Administration is holding a webinar which is actually tomorrow from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to about the executive summary and general overview of MUTCD and then on March 28th uh, they're doing a um, more a deeper dive to kind of look at because there's I guess there's some elements that deal with vulnerable road users in the NU, M, M, U, T, C, D. so uh, I just thought that was interesting um, that you know that the this is I guess the 11th edition and if you don't mind I I want to make a commercial for the Environmental Concerns Commission if that's okay <laughs> Uh, we are we we give out a uh, what we call a Green Champion Award, okay, and um, so this would be for people, individual I mean individuals, organizations, companies in Villa Park that have done something notable for the environment, and we give them an award. Um, March twenty first is the deadline, and we typically 
present the award um, given scheduling, et cetera, uh, at the village board meeting closest to Earth Day. Okay. So if you, anyone knows anyone who might be deserving, we have one nominee so far. Uh, so if anyone knows anyone that you'd like to nominate, uh, you can go to the Environmental Concerns Commission website, and there's a link to fill out an online uh, nomination form. Okay. And that's all I've got. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Joe? I think I said quite a bit tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I really don't have any other comments at all. Uh, I'm kind of silent, which, which is good. So, uh, Kevin, do you have anything? I have nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Uh, so that kind of comes to the end. Mm -hmm. So, do we have a motion to? A second. Paid, second. Second the motion. Okay. Bob. Okay. Carl and Bob. Carl and Bob. All in favor say aye. Yeah. Aye. Any nays? No. Therefore, we are now ending at 843. Awesome.